Denmark podcast. I'm Kaysander Mellish. Denmark is a small country. Danish people tend to think small things are good. Small cars, small homes, small ambitions when it comes to international team sports. But one thing in Denmark is never small, and that's a baby carriage. Danes seem to believe that a carriage or pram for a new baby should be roughly the size of a hotel room on wheels. Inside, baby will be wrapped up warm with a fat feather blanket, even in the summer. There'll also be room for pillows, books, toys, snacks, diapers, and extra clothes in the giant baby carriage. Danish babies are like rolling royalty. Everything they need is at their tiny fingertips. Generally, Danish babies live a privileged life. Denmark is a good place to be a baby. The food and the health care situation is good, and mom gets four weeks at home before you're born and 12 weeks after. After that, she and dad can split the rest of a year of paid leave from work. Danish parents make good use of this time. It's led to a small industry of baby music classes, baby swimming, baby yoga, and baby cafe meetings. Someday you may be sitting in a cafe in Denmark and suddenly find yourself surrounded by four to six babies and their parents. This is because the Danish government puts together groups of women who live closely to each other and all have babies within a few days of each other. They're called mother's groups and they meet and they drink coffee and discuss diapers and nap times and then afterwards they all try to get their giant baby carriages on a single city bus. It's a fight to the finish. Anyway, if the mother's group has the right chemistry, it can meet for decades. I know a woman whose child is in his 30s and she still meets with her mother's group every year. Every baby born in Denmark gets an official birth certificate from the nearest church, even if the parents are not Christians. And Danish babies have to have a name that's on the Danish government's approved list. There's a list of approved names in Denmark, a long list, and it has plenty of Muslim and African names on it, but you can't be like a Hollywood star and name your child Pilot Inspector. It's against Danish law. You also can't give a boy a girl's name, or vice versa. And if baby's other parent is a Dane, you'll find that last names can be a drama as well. Now, anybody who wants to can be a Hansen or a Nielsen, but there's also a list of last names that are restricted. Since fewer than 2,000 people in Denmark use these last names, they're considered protected tribal names, slechtnaun, or bloodline names. Many slechtnaun are related to places like the old farm estates from the 18th and 19th century. Only certain members of the family are allowed to use the name, and depending on your baby's place in the family line, you may have to ask some of the older family members for permission. I know a guy whose great aunt on her deathbed gave him permission to use the slechtnaun. He was thrilled. It was a really big deal. Anyway, as soon as your baby gets a name, he or she gets a CPR number right away. That identifies them in the Danish government system. CPR numbers are your birthday plus four additional numbers, even for girls, odd for boys. So your baby needs a CPR to get on the waiting list for government child care. Child care is not free in Denmark, but it is heavily subsidized, and 97% of Danish kids go to government-run daycare. Even the princes and princesses of the royal family do. In popular areas like Copenhagen, there can be a long wait for a spot in the Vugestu, or cradle room. Now, the Vugestu is where six-month-old Danes start meeting each other and building the lifelong friendships that make it so hard to meet anybody when you come to Denmark as an adult foreigner. At Vugestu, the program is not very structured. Danes are great believers in what they call free play, which basically involves kids running around and doing whatever they feel like. Adults don't interfere unless the kids are in some sort of life-threatening situation. Danes really don't do competitive parenting. There's none of this learning violin or learning to speak Mandarin before age three. I tried to give my daughter piano lessons at age four, which she asked for, and I got a lot of disapproval from the Danish parents. 
they said. She should be having free play. Anyway, when playtime is done and it's time for a nap, smaller Danish babies sleep outdoors. This old Viking tradition is considered very healthy and good for their little lungs. If it's raining, the babies sleep under an overhang, but if it's just an ordinary cold, gray Danish weather day, they're still out there, even in the winter, strapped into their giant baby carriages. Usually under the same fat feather quilt they wore in summer, plus a little hat. Warm and comfy, nice and safe. And that's the How to Live in Denmark podcast for this week. You can now read the How to Live in Denmark book in English, Chinese, and Arabic. Go to books.howtolivendenmark.com to find out how. You can follow us on Facebook at How to Live in Denmark and on Twitter at How to Live in DK. The two is a number. See you next time.